Okay, we're coming up on the home stretch now. Just got to create a health meter and uh, do a little damage to it. So uh, go over and uh, head to the header file of your uh, CS character class, and we are going to declare a property that uh, the um, CS level will be interested in later. So that's why we're declaring it out here. And uh, this will just be non atomic assign. Uh, I'm going to call this one float current health. And let's do another one. This is going to be a. Uh, bool variable and this is just going to be set or called has own health because you could optionally choose to um, exclude the uh, the health meter from your characters all right so uh, once you have those just remember that uh, over here in the uh, implementation file we're going to have to write an underscore before them and uh, we'll do that right now so we do need to um, Set this up, and uh, I guess the probably the best thing to do would be to um, first find out inside of here if uh, you have your own health, and um, if you do, we'll cut out to a different method to set up the uh, actual health meter. So there's going to be uh, character data, and then uh, object uh, for key, and I called this has own health. At least I'm pretty sure that's what I called it. Actually, what I want to double check is that I even made that property. And yes, sure, sure enough, we did. All right. So back over this way, uh, that has been established. And we could also go ahead and um, put in here current health. Well, you know what? Let's go ahead and just run the if statement. We'll say if has own health equals yes. Then self set up health meter. All right, and of course uh, we need to come out of this method now and write set up health meter. And if you don't have your own health, of course that will get um, ignored. All right, now. Uh, we're going to put in here current health. Actually, come to think of it, we should probably get, um, we need to have our max health too. And that is another one of those properties we should declare over here. So just copy what you got. Max health. Here we go. Step back over this way. And. Your max health is actually what gets um, established from your character data. And make that a float value. And then current health will equal max health when this initially loads up, right? Makes sense. Uh, then we're going to make use of our uh, image assets that we've already got in here. So we've got our health bar and the green portion of the health bar. And obviously, if you want that to be some other color, uh, you can either change the source image, it's just a square, or you can um, color it in a sprite kit. Uh, but you know, if you did make this a red bar, maybe you call it red instead of green. Okay, so back over this way, uh, we are going to. Right in here, SK uh, sprite node. Call this health bar. This is going to equal SK sprite node, sprite node with image named. That'll be our health bar. And then I'm going to say health bar dot oh, Z position. And I'd go ahead and just put that something like 200. Remember your. Um, your character is floating around 100, so that'll be uh, quite a ways above it. And then our position is going to be CG point make, and uh, we'll leave the X value at a default of zero, and then uh, we'll put in here character, just character dot frame dot size dot height 
uh, divided by 2. And then if you want to move it up a little bit above um, the top portion of the character, uh, you could do that after this. So plus, I don't know, maybe 10 or something like that, or even just 5 or something. But uh, I'll just leave that as is because uh, it kind of worked out well for me. And uh, then let's write self, add child, health bar. Next up is going to be the, uh, the spinning wheel of thought. Uh, next up is obviously going to be the green portion. So uh, we can actually copy a lot of this. And let's just call this um, green. That'll be green. Let me make all those green. Uh, this is going to be at 201. And uh, we're going to set the, um, the anchor point of this to be lined up uh, to the left. So we just put it in here CG point uh, make. 0, 0.0 uh, by default it's at 0 0.5 in the middle so doing that at, at doing that at 0, 0.0 is going to make it um, anchored at the far left and when you think about it, your um, your health bar is going to be descending toward the left so that left side won't move but the um, the right side will and you could always test this out um, by leaving it in the middle if you wanted just to see the different effect and then uh, green will be the name of that uh, all right, and then we need to make a little bit of adjustment and adjustment here, because uh, now the anchor point is off to the left, or actually even before that, uh, we're just gonna uh, make the x position equal to green dot frame dot size dot width divided by two, and that'll be a negative number. Okay. Uh, so probably the best thing to do is just publish this and maybe change that back to zero so you can see the difference but uh, yeah, yeah, maybe that is the best thing to do let's try that I know it's a little confusing but basically just taking half of the width of it and moving it over that distance toward the uh, toward the left or offsetting from the center, however you want to think about it. But, um, let's see. Are they even loading up back here? <laughs> okay, so sure enough, uh, it does look like they're all uh, all looking the way ex I expected. Let's, uh, let's knock this down to zero. see where we end up okay so sure enough it does look like about half of it is uh, hanging off the edge there uh, let's uh, undo that and let's put this back at uh, 0.5 just to see what that does now so we're still moving it off to the left and then so there you go it's it's now <laughs> centered over here so not the easiest thing to understand but uh, a little trial and error is all it takes all right, so we've got those guys in there, and uh, what we'll end up doing uh, when we damage the characters, of course, uh, just a little bit of an equation with uh, figuring out the uh, current health uh, divided by the max health, or I can't remember if it's the other way around or not, but uh, that will slowly make the, uh, the character's health go down. And if you if you just wanted to uh, test that out real quick, you could always uh, do something like find our, your update method. And say let's let's try this. Current health equals current health uh, minus let's go zero point two five, and then right in here self child node with name green dot x scale is going to equal current health divided by max health and uh, keep in mind that 
you know, well, well let's suppose current health equal 50 uh, out of 100. So that's going to equal 0.5, and your x scale is in a range of 0 to 1. All right. And you can do that math on a calculator. I'm pretty sure it works out. But uh, so watch what happens uh, now when we update this. There it goes. Slowly ticking down on all of them. All right, since we got time in this video, let's uh, go ahead and get rid of that. And I'm going to come down here to the end of the file, the very bottom, I should say, and uh, write uh, void do damage with amount. And we'll pass into this method the amount of damage we want to do. So it's going to be float, oops, float amount. And we're going to need to declare this. So just copy that. Come over here to your header file. Just pop it anywhere in there so our level can call it. And let's go ahead and write this. So we're going to say uh, current health is going to equal itself uh, minus the amount that we pass in there. And uh, could we just. Copy this from before, couldn't I? Writing the same thing again. Uh, child with node with name, and that's going to be green dot x scale is going to equal our current health divided by our max health, and then we uh, will say if current health is ever less than or equal to zero, well, you've died at that point. And we will, at this point, then um, enumerate through all of the um, child nodes within here. So let's just copy in our, our usual enumerate child nodes with name. This time, though, uh, actually, there's two differences. Uh, we're saying self. Uh, previously, when we've done that in the level, we've uh, written my world. Uh, now we're just referring to this class. We're going to write self. And then the star is going to pick up any or every node it uh, sees. And then inside the block, what we're going to do is right in here, node remove from parent. And then finally, after that runs, I'm going to go ahead and write self remove from parent. And from that point on, I'll be extremely confident that every single child has been removed. I, I think you can get away without this right here and rely on the entire class removing itself and, and all the children within it. But um, yeah, this is kind of just a safety. Uh, also, to I mean, it gives you a good chance to see just putting in the star here, right? Okay, so uh, that actually does it for that method. Uh, now we can go over to the level class and uh, let's find our contact listener. There she is. And uh, what we're going to look for here is now if uh, oh, we've already got it in. If you hit the wall, um, we, uh, can, we can remove this um, NS log statement and Let's uh, now check within here if uh, first body dot category bit mask is equal to the player category. Obviously, that means that first body was the player, and in which case, we'll say cs character character. We'll just cast this as the first body. So let's be cs character. Did a little star after it uh, first body dot node so whatever that node was is now going to be referred to as the character and then we'll say character do damage with amount and uh, we need to um, well for right now we just put in a number like 10 but um, we need to get the uh, the background damage amount from the uh, the property list file so um, get that in a second so, uh, then we're gonna write self stop all players and I know it's tempting to put this one in here, but we're actually going to write a new method. Uh, it's going to be stop all players from collision. 
and I'm tempted to put in there from wall collision, but I'll leave that uh, leave the door open to um, you know using it for another collision as well. All right, now I'm just going to put in here else, and then uh, if uh, second body that category bit mask equals player category, then I also need to put in here second body dot node. And again, I'll just leave in do damage with the mount 10 and um, this stop all players from collision, which has yet to be written. Okay, uh, what should we take care of first? Let's stop all the players and we'll give this a quick test with just 10 in there. All right, so uh, uh, this method is going to look something like, let me find my notes on it. Oh, there we go. Well, first let's find a place to write it. And we'll put it down here under this pragma mark that we already have, conveniently called stop all characters, and we'll write void stop all players from collision. Uh, yet again, I'm going to do this same thing that we had before. Uh, cancel any previous requests from the target. In fact, a lot of this we can just copy. Uh, so we're going to do that. And then we're going to figure out who our characters are. Let's grab all of them. Copy that. And uh, now we're just going to say character stop moving. All right, that should take care of that. Let's go and. Um, Try to run ourselves into a wall here and see if we get uh, damaged by 10. While that's loading up, I'm going to check back over here with our game data property list to see if we did put in there uh, the uh, the damage amount for the background, and we haven't yet, so we'll put that in. Okay, let's go find a wall to knock into. Doink! <laughs> sure enough, it decreases this. All right, so let's go back up to the top of the uh, property list file, and I'm just going to copy this one in. We'll say uh, level border causes damage by, and I'll set that to a kind of high number for right now, just so that um, we can uh, we we'll just test it twice, and they'll should end up uh, killing us off. All right, so back over into the uh, level file we go. Uh, let's find our contact method again, and the um, the amount is all right. So currently ten. We're going to replace that with um, level border causes damage by. Of course, you're going to get an error for right now, but. Uh, I'm going to set this amount up over here. And uh, probably we can get away with this being an int. In fact, yeah. All right, so level border causes damage by. Come on down here to where we, You know what? We still haven't set up those labels with the instructions. <laughs> For those of you that, sorry if you were hanging on way back in the first lesson uh, so let's see where uh, I'll just put this right here and then this will equal all right and just know that you could make that a be an integer value I mean a float value if you want it I don't see much reason to do that though Doink, 50% off. And so long, sucker. So he's out of here. All right, uh, that actually does it for uh, damaging these characters. And, um, well, we've got some logic to go later on with, uh, you know, what happens when your, your character, well, when you start running out of characters, like right there. Uh, but uh, we'll address that in another lesson to come.